Hi everyone, welcome to a new Begijn of a video. I'm Tommy and in this video I would like to show you the full training of Genesis. Uh, he's 10 years old for the ones who don't know him yet. Um, it's my Grand Prix horse and I thought it, was, it would be nice to give you a little insight in my training, what I do on a, on a regular training. I think it's important that you uh, before you're going to ride that you have kind of a plan because yeah, when you do Grand Prix elements and you you just can't uh, pra practice everything in the same training because it simply is too much. So I always decide today I'm going to do a little bit more Sash Piaf and tomorrow I will work more on my canter or, or whatever needs to be done. Um, today I have the plan to work a little bit more on the Passage Piaf. As usual, if you have any questions then don't hesitate to leave them down in the comments. Enjoy the video and I'm going to take chances now. So uh, yeah, I'm uh, starting the training now. Uh, always when we start, uh, yeah, we take enough time to do the warm-up walking with the long rain. Um, today it was a little bit later in the afternoon so he was already out of the stable before uh, normally i ride him in the morning uh, he haven't go gone out then yet so it's very important that you take the time for for yeah walking around and uh, what i always try to do in the beginning uh, which is very difficult which i find very difficult is that you have a good connection in the in the walk so the 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 neck of the horse is extended that they seek for the hand that they will uh, yeah, walk in contact as you see now uh, yeah he often doesn't take enough contact the, the reins are too much in kind of a loop um, and that's also something what you want in the extended walk in the test here yeah he was also a little bit distracted because there were horses behind the the wall so he was listening to them because he's a stallion he's uh, he's a little bit dis distracted quickly um, but yeah this is also something what you need to do in the test here is getting better um, yeah and, and and I think also when you do the warm-up when you walk it's very important that you try to be uh, yeah consistent in what you want and that you already in the warm-up try to have this good connection and of course um, I always say that, uh, yeah, it's doesn't, uh, uh, yeah, it's not for nothing that we call it the warm up. Um, all those things. Sometimes with some horses, it's easier in the beginning. With some horses, it's easier uh, at the end of the training to have the really good stretch and the really good connection. But the goal is that you always, um, yeah, be aware if it's good or not or whatever and that you know uh, what you want to do to achieve the ultimate goal if you are going to achieve it <laughs> at all of course because yeah uh, some moments some parts of the training is more difficult and then you work on that part and then another part is going to be difficult so there's always something um, yeah, so if I watch the video back now, I, I even want him more with his nose in front. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm riding alone. I do have a big mirror, but I must admit that when I, when I look it back on the video now, it looks a little bit different than, uh, than how I feel. Um, after the warm up, I start doing uh, trot with a long rein. Uh, here it's also important that the horse seeks for the bit that he wants to be in the connection. Uh, Genesis has the, the tendency to be too light in the connection sometimes to get a little bit behind the bit. Here it's getting better. Um, yeah, like I said, if I watch it back now then there is something more to improve definitely out there. Uh, that yeah, that he will seek the the bit more. Also in this part of the training, what I also like to do a lot is not riding on the track. Uh, so I take a line in the middle of the arena, so you can really check if the horse is straight. Of course, uh, yeah. When you are on the second or the third track, then it's very important you put your hands forward and don't help him at the left or the right rein 
to check if he's really, really straight. For example, when he would fall to the left or to the right, then you could make a correction. But don't try to hold one side because you feel he's leaning to the left or to the right. Also in this uh, stage of my training, it's important that the horse is yeah, moving on their own legs as much as possible. And also here when I go on a diagonal that you have a really straight line, not swinging to the left and right, and that you try to have the horse as straight as possible at the beginning. And of course, this is already a Grand Prix horse, so he's a little bit more trained already. But uh, yeah, those things for me are, are kind of important. Uh, I also make a very simple transition to, to the canter with loose reins and that the canter is nice and relaxed and over the back and that he, uh, yeah, he stretch his whole body. That's the goal of the warming up. And here, yeah, you see that uh, I do have slightly more bending to the right and the hunches are a little bit to the right. So if I'm really critical when I watch it back now, he's not 100% straight. I have to put the shoulders a little bit more to the right and uh, take less flexion to the right as I see it now. So that's good for me to know as well. In the beginning it's not so important that the quality of the canter is really really good but it's very important that you don't go too slow. Okay, And I also make a change with the long rein. I have to support him a little bit with my hands because yeah, it's difficult with the long rein like that. Of course at the end you have to be able to do it without supporting him but maybe that was more my mental kind of thing than that I was afraid that it didn't uh, work out. Here you see I go forward and then the, the, the canter strides become bigger. So in the beginning it's very important that you don't canter too slow and that the hind legs are like active and, and going. And then after the warm up, take a little break, walk him a little bit. Oh, <laughs> and the gird a little bit tighter, otherwise I fall off. <laughs> and the, the reason uh, I decide to do, uh, yeah, to do it like this, like with the voiceover, is because. Um, yeah, when, you, when I want to show one kind of element or one kind of thing like in a how-to, it's easy for me to write and explain at the same time. But for this purpose, I uh, decided to do it like this so I had a little bit more focus while I'm writing because sometimes it's difficult to, to talk and write at the same time. And uh, yeah, I think it's important that uh, when you ride your horse that you have full focus because horses doesn't the horse don't understand what is uh, yeah good or or not good and if we are like inconsistent or how do you say it not consistent in what we're doing then you get confusion so that's why i decide to do it now so after uh, yeah i walked him I always start making transitions because like i told in the earlier how to's uh, yeah, we, we made separate videos about the warm-up and the transitions and so on. So if you're interested, you can uh, you can watch them, look them back. Um, um, yeah, I all the time start with making transitions, in this case to trot and uh, walk and to trot. Because if you make transitions, you really feel uh, at the moment what you need to do. Like uh, if, if do you get a good enough reaction on the leg forward? Does he stop easily when you touch the rein? because I think it has to be easy and simple. So, uh, yeah, and, and therefore also not so important if the trot is like really expressive, uh, you can make him more expressive later on, but in the beginning it's, yeah, okay. Okay, that was a very interesting transition because I wanted him to slow down and then he didn't do it easy enough and then I stopped him but the moment he stopped he yeah he decided to slow down the hind legs stopped moving as well so I decided to go forward immediately 
So the goal is here not to make just some random transitions. The goal here is to teach your horse that it's super easy that when you, with, 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 with um, yeah, the minimum amount of, of hand aids and with your sit, he needs to come back immediately. And when they come back, they have to come back easy and they have to keep uh, the hind legs going. So it's very important that every time you feel um, that when you slow him down, that when the hind legs are getting lack of energy, you immediately go forward again. So that was a better transition. He kept thinking forward. Um, and also the reason why I do those transitions is for, like I said in the beginning of this video, for me, with him, it's sometimes difficult to get his nose like really uh, in front uh, and that I get, get the, the real length in the frame so when I touch the bit and he doesn't come back then I probably have to hold on the reins for too long time which make his neck shorter instead of that he come back in speed what it's supposed to be so also to make your connection and the position of the horse uh, yeah, more optimal. It's very important that when you touch the bit that the horse immediately um, slows down so you can release your hands and open the neck immediately. And here you see he stays still a little bit too short. Um, so therefore I make some more transitions in there. I stopped him because I felt that I touched the bit and the only reaction I had was th the neck gets shorter but he didn't stop. So I decide to go to halt. Then it's important that I release my hand, he's not going forward already. And then he has to wait for my leg to go forward. So what you see now, you see already that the trot is getting more and more expressive because the timing of my transitions is getting better. And also, um, the same thing what I do in the beginning of the training, like uh, uh, the trot and walk and walk trot transitions, now I decide to do it in the trot itself. So I bring him back and then I release my hand and then I touch him with my leg to go forward. And of course with him, because he's already like a Grand Prix horse, it's already more defined. But you still see that I have to... to uh, yeah, to work on it more, at least that's what I want. Uh, so that it became more easy than this, that when I really touch the bit, that he slows down, bring the weight on the hind legs, that I can relax my hand more quick and then I can add energy without losing the harmony or that he gets long in the body when I go forward or that he gets short in the neck when I go back, all those small things. For me, that's uh, yeah what I'm working on right now. And uh, yeah, and then you saw also that when I had some transitions in the trot itself, and when you manage that really well, that you are able to bring him back and immediately add some lag because it was a nice and good and easy transitions. Then you see the hind legs going to have more energy and therefore you're going to have a more expressive trot. I also made a video about how to make a big trot. Uh, you can also watch it back. It was with a horse who was, uh, yeah, who was a bit younger. Uh, but here you can see more the results, how it turns out when you, when you do this well. Uh, and even then now I'm still not super satisfied, so it needs to get even better. But uh, yeah, that's what, what we're working on. Also the first canter, um, you see I take a little bit more speed because I think it's um, with this horse, uh, when he was younger, he had a really quick and hurried canter. And uh, sometimes he still have that tendency because he's very uh, electric and he has a lot of go, which made it sometimes difficult because um, when you, are not able to release your hands without the horse running away, then it's also very difficult to get the hind legs at the right position because to get the hind legs under, they need to go in a good way forward on the leg. They need to give a good reaction on the leg. And when they're running away already, when you release your hands, then yeah, you can't give leg because they're running. So then it's difficult to get the hind legs under. 
So that's what I'm testing now all the time in the canter. Can I release? Is he not running away? And then when I give lag, I want I not only want to go faster, but I want him to make bigger stripes that you get more quality of the canter. And that's what I'm yeah uh, always trying to do. Is and that's also in my opinion what what dressage is. Eh? The dressage is that. Uh, yeah, that you can develop the natural paces of your horses to a maximum uh, what your horse is capable of. So uh, there I bring him back and now I go forward. You see I don't have him super straight to the right. In my opinion I have too much right bending and then the shoulders are slightly to the left and the hunches are slightly to the right. So. It's good for me as well that I see it now because I have to be more strict on that I I see. Uh, okay, here I go forward again. And also I decide to to wait most of the times to bring him back after the corner because you see a lot of times that the horses um, already slow down themselves in the canter or before the uh, the corner. And then it's important, yeah, see that was not so good transition. I lost it after the change, he got long in the body, so I decided to slow him down. And the moment I slowed him down, the hind legs completely stopped. So then now I repeat it, I bring him back. And now you see that he listens better on the rain aids and on my sit, that he come back and that he stays active behind. When I, don't, when I feel he don't stay active behind, I immediately go forward, add some energy, because in my opinion, the first thing what you need to do is get the hind legs under, and when that's in order, you do the rest. So now I go forward again, you see that he makes nice bigger jumps, he going to have more air time, and that's the goal, uh, especially in this case with this horse. Of course, when you have a horse who have maybe too much airtime, you need to do some other training. But in this case, I I do the same like I do in the trot. Um, I want to make these small transitions in the canter, bring him back, release my hands, make him wait, and then make him go forward on the leg. And then when I go forward, I want bigger stripes and not only running. And therefore, it's important that the horse really waits. Uh, with going forward until you give leg and he's not start running off when you uh, when you release the front. Now and then after a little bit, you see here it's also interesting because I decided to give him a little break. But as he w gets warmed up, he gets more excited. So what he's doing here now in the halt is that he starts to take over too much. So also with the long rein, I want to have control because when I am in the test and I do extended walk, he, I need to have connection, I need to have an active, like here it's getting better, an active walk, but it still needs to be uh, in my control. So then I put it in halt, also with the long range, I made him wait until I feel in the halt that I can release my hands without him going to walk already. That's very important. He really has to wait for my leg to go forward. Otherwise, I'm going to lose the hind legs. Here's also a good example. I wanted to slow him down. Uh, he came back. Now it's better. Yeah, he came back, but he stopped. So I made the transition to trot to teach him. Okay, when, when I go back you need to go forward and now I repeat it a few times I can do it all in the walk itself oh there he wanted to go to the left that's also not what you want and this is also basically yeah my kind of preparation for the Piaf um, what you want you want to have um, a, a small walk uh, you want to have the the stripes of the walk needs to get smaller because Piaf is is a trot uh, on the spot so if the walk before you do piaf is too big brav okay see so for me the it's not so important the first piaf that it's like really from the books i just felt that i needed to do it i, I don't do it usually always like this but for me, it's very important that you have a lot of variation because if you do it always on a certain way, horses get used to it and they start to take over control. 
So now I made some PF and trot out of it. Um, but I was saying that it's important that before I do the PF, I have to have control in the walk. I have to be able to small to, to get the, the walk small and active and then release my hands. Good, okay. So here you see I make already a little bit more transition towards passage. For me it's very important. Uh, yeah, what you see now is that he already think, oh, I'm going to do passage, but then it, it's not fluent and it's like a little bit behind the leg, which means he already understands too much the meaning of it. And then he goes too much up and I lose the forward tendency. So what I do first all the time is, is make him think to go to passage, then I go trot out. And then I go back in and out and in and out for the first time. So I always have to have the feeling when I do passage, when I touch the leg, that he has a forward tendency. Now here you see, I really have to go out the piaf or he is going out of the piaf in the trot. And, and later I want him to go in the passage forward without like, like what he's doing there. That was good. Then I give leg and then I get more energy in the hind legs. Um, uh, without him going really out of the passage. That, but every time when I feel I don't have that, that energy forward, then I always trot out because it's very important that you, that you always can go forward. You see here, then I, I turn to the left across the arena and I, uh, I slowed him down at the center line. Normally, he need to do piaf. But in the training, I'm not doing it because I really want him to wait for me. This is getting better. So, in fact, I made him thinking that I wanted to do Piaf, but then I went forward and then the reaction forward was too late. And here you see also he's going swinging right, left, right, left. So it means that I lose the forward tendency. So then I go a little bit forward. To straighten him there you see I the next thing I'm trying to do now when I have a nice passage that I can really let go in the front um, a second ago I was like riding with one hand and pat him because I really want him to understand when I when it's good and I do nothing he needs to stay like this until yeah until I decide to do something else and and he is really clever and he very willing to work and then he wants to already say oh i know, already know what to do i'm going to do it and then it's important that he has to learn to wait for my command to do something else and th that is a little bit more like working on the small details when it's good try to release your hands and later try to release your legs and actually he needs to stay like this. Here I put my hand forward and then he stayed like that. Then the next step is I add a little bit more energy. Okay, when I look it back now, I'm going to be critical. I didn't go straight across the arena because I'm looking in the mirror to the left. Probably my balance go to the left and he was not really, really super straight. So for me, that's also something to remember for the next training that I don't look in the mirror but in front of me and that I go really forward because yeah it's also difficult for a horse when you go sideways um, of course this is another kind of training because in the Grand Prix in the freestyle you want to do half pass in passage also so at the end you need to be able to do all those kind of things but in the beginning it's always important that some basic things you need to remember really well. Like when he's straight, he has to think forward, he has to come back easily because you want to have control. And every time a little bit of break when you do a good thing. Now I'm going to control the walk again because every time, uh, yeah, in the training, it's important that you test those things because you're going to lose it easily after you've done some other work. And then you need to go back to the basic stuff, control the walk. Here you see I make a lot of transitions. That, that was a better one. That before the transition, now it's better. Oh, <laughs> see I'm clicking already because I see come. So there I made a not a good decision. What I see now, I had to go forward sooner because he, the hind legs were stopping too much, but I didn't feel it. 
uh, well enough there. So, okay, now I go forward and back and forward and back because you see it's a little bit uh, not fluent. You go to the left, to the right, and forward and back. And I want to try to have the same kind of passage. All oh, this is good. Yeah, yeah, now it's good. Now it's good. Okay, now I made a transition to Piaf. Okay, now I bring him back because yeah, I wanted to say he goes a little bit too much forward. And for the first Piaf or in the beginning, it's it's good because you you have to be able to go forward. Now you see I have a little bit difficulties with the rhythm, so I need to be able to go. Yeah, very nice. Okay, good. Yeah, okay, and then you see I have some very nice moments and some moments I lose it a little bit and all these things you, you're going to practice also now. This is good and now I feel, oh, see that he loses rhythm because he gets a little bit too enthusiastic or whatever. So I decide to turn a little bit to the left. In this case, it was also a good thing to do because when you're going to turn you can have a little bit more control because obviously he wanted to go out too much. And I decide to to continue to do the Piaf a little bit longer until he finds the rhythm again. He's just sometimes a little bit over excited and then he's like, oh, okay, I'm, go I'm going to do my best. And then, yeah, he needs to be a little bit more relaxed. So that was a good uh, example what I did. I didn't uh, make a huge corrections or so, but I just try to to with my with my C to maintain the right rhythm so that he's going to follow the good rhythm again. And of course, when he listen and when he do it well, you give him a little break to reward him. I was actually pretty pretty pleased today with the passage Piaf. Um, and I decided to, to do some changes that transition was not so good, so I immediately repeat it. Because you want... Okay, then I have control walk again. Yeah, and then I go to canter. Okay. In the in the future, I, I want those transition even better because, in my opinion, he still was a little bit too short in the neck in the transition. And I think it's because he was a little bit not active enough. Maybe it was me that I was not clear enough in my aids or whatever. But those things, yeah, needs to be better in the future. Um, and also, like I say in the intro, it's like you can't do all exercises or all the, the, the elements what you want to practice in one training. And especially when you do the Grand Prix, there are so many things you need to work on. So always it's a good idea to make a nice plan uh, like today I want to work more on my Piaf Passage and my transitions or, and then uh, you want to work more on the canter parts like the pirouettes and the half passes. But what I figured lately is that uh, uh, sometimes it's good with Genesis to yeah, see that's not so good. Um, he gets running and short in the neck. So I was actually too late when I watch it back now. I needed to feel it earlier to bring him back, release. But then you see I, I was too late and I, I really needed to make a transition to walk again. And now it's already better. So immediately when he's better on the hind legs, I can open the neck. Um, what I figured lately is that I, I, I have to make some changes with him on a daily basis because I haven't done it like for a couple of days. And then I tried to do the changes and then he was like over excited and, and made it mistakes. So um, I decided today to do uh, at least one time the one time tempis. So the beginning is good and then the end I wanted to go more forward to get bigger change. Yeah, yeah, okay, that's it. Yeah, good. <laughs> I'm getting excited even when I when I watch it back. But um, the last few changes, they were so nice and big. That's actually how I want him to to start so in the future i'm going to work on that more maybe uh, i didn't want to do it today because he already uh, did uh, a lot of good things 
but I kept in my mind that maybe tomorrow or the day after I will focus more on the one time ten piece and I will try to start the ones like I did finish now uh, because then the quality of the changes obviously get a lot better um, yeah so that was my training for today uh, I hope uh, yeah you liked it um, I wrote like a half an hour or so and I thought it's maybe nice to to show you the whole thing um, yeah like I said I, I really hope you liked it guys if you have anything uh, you want to say then uh, leave it down in the comments and otherwise uh, I see you next week on Thursday bye bye <laughs>